Hello folks. I thought I'd do a little video on uh, how I've uh, upgraded my old Craftsman drill press, which I've had since uh, I think 91 or 92. It uh, Sears um, marketing people call this a one horsepower drill press. Uh, well, in your dreams. I think that's the stall power. Uh, this is the at at eight amps. Uh, this is the motor that came off of it, which I'll probably repurpose for something else here at some point. This used to be on the front, had the power switch, the switch for the light in it. So I ripped all that wiring out. And put this in. This is a Tico Westinghouse uh, variable frequency drive. I don't know if I'm thinking I, I might be the first to to put up something on this new L510 that uh, it converts the single phase 110 to three phase 220. The motor that I got here, um, I got from Amazon. It's a, an inverter duty motor. Uh, that should probably be in quotes. The, uh, um, of course, it's made in China like everything else. Um, the VFD I got from Wolf Automation. Uh, a lot of the other components like this box switches, things I bought, I bought from Amazon. Uh, except for this, this is actually a pretty good control. It's Siemens. Um, and uh, I'm, I use it for, to, this is the, the run stop, and then there's forward reverse. I don't know if you can see the little enunciator up here, switch from forward to reverse there, little green light. But, uh, and then this is the power button. This is really, really cheap Chinese. Uh, it worries me a little bit. That's, that actually switches the, the AC power. This is uh, less cheap Chinese. It's some ripoff of Telemechanique, uh, which is, which is, uh, I'm pretty sure Telemechanique is a, is a European company. Well, this is a misspelled Tel Main Q something or other uh, on the, the switch block. Um, so I assume it came from somewhere in China. Uh, and like I say, this, I looked at a lot of different switches and I settled on this. I'm spending a little bit more money on this Siemens switch. Uh, because, let's see if it'll show here, when I, let's turn it back on, see, when, when you, you pull it out, and I, I hope you can see that there's a green band there to indicate that it's, that it's run, that it's on, and then, like I say, there's forward, reverse, I've got the two wire control set up, just two twisted pairs. I've got the speed range set for uh, limited to 240. Oh, I have the display indicating in in spindle speed. Uh, that you can adjust in the the scale factor in this. In, in the VFD to have it actually indicate spindle speed when you go in and, and change the, the programming. And then I've got it going up to 3,000 RPM. That uh, seemed plenty fast for me. I think uh, under the lid here, when it, in the original configuration with the two belts and the idler pulley, it, uh, uh, it went up to 3150, I think. Anyway, there's just 
one belt up here now, but there's no reason I, if I, uh, that I, I can't run it with two belts still. Um, I've got the right size belts to do that. If I put the idler back in and, and that's if I were to want more torque here because this is at low speeds is not the torquiest thing. But uh, there, there's a way, I believe you can overcome that to at least a, to, a, to some extent uh, by overriding some overcurrent protection in this VFD. Um, but like I say, I can still, uh, I can, I can still rig this up with two belts. I can get basically gear this down by a factor of four and uh, have all the torque I need if I need it. And that's actually, uh, you can still turn a pretty good sized bit at low speeds with that amount of torque. But, uh, so let's see, what did I do in the programming? I went in and I changed the, uh, the default operating mode to, uh, to sensorless vector, con uh, vector control because that's, that has more low, low end torque uh, than the, than the, uh, um, ah, the other mode. So, I adjusted the default acceleration, um, I adjusted the, the, well, that's a matter of the, you're setting this upper limit here, that's, those are just setting frequency parameters in here to set those low, those, the low end and the high end. Uh, change this so that it instead of displaying the uh, the frequency that it's outputting to the motor it displays the spindle speed that's adjusted it's scalable uh, so that you you have to do a little bit of math but you can scale it so I mean I'm within about one percent of displaying the the actual uh, uh, spindle speed at, at the chuck on this <clears throat> anyway it uh, worked out nice oh it also defaults to uh, to, to the carrier frequency um, to 5 kilohertz which uh, whines very annoyingly and uh, I adjusted that up to the maximum that it can go to, uh, which is 16 kilohertz, and I don't think I can, I don't think I can hear 16 kilohertz anymore. So, hey, it's quiet now. Uh, it doesn't whistle or whine uh, because of that carrier frequency. Anyway, it uh, turned out nice. I thought it was worth it because this has actually got pretty good bearings in it. The run out at the, at the spindle is only about a tenth. Uh, I, good, I like this grizzly keyless chuck um, that I've had for about five years. Anyway, this thing is kind of big, which I didn't actually figure out that, that it was that it was, they'd made them bigger uh, until after I had ordered it and I was reading the manual more carefully and realized that, hey, wait, the frame size for the one horsepower, you know, 110 input uh, VFD is, uh, is frame size two. If you, get, if you get the three quarter horse or the half horse version, well, the whole thing's only about about this wide, 
and it's about a half an inch shallower than front to back than this. Um, I uh, mounted a piece of aluminum angle to the side of the of the drill press. Uh, had some some uh, uh, it's about a two tenths thick aluminum plate that I had. I cut. Um, I used for my control lines, I used, since I've recently started plumbing up my little bitty shop here for uh, compressed air, to have a couple of compressed air drops around inside the shop, and a hose reel uh, that I can run out into the garage. I used, it struck me that that, that high pressure uh, air hose might make a nice little conduit. and. Uh, it did. I think I'm. I'd kind of like to have a a dust cover. I, I need to get some aluminum sheet and bend a dust cover to cover up this this wiring here. Uh, other than that, it uh, it all went together pretty pretty clean. It uh, runs good. It drills good holes. In fact, I think it drills better holes. Uh, uh, I don't think I'm imagining it that uh, with this more even torque from the three-phase motor, motor, it uh, it seems to drill uh, better holes than it used to. But uh, anyway, I thought I'd uh, show you how it turned out. Um, I hope you enjoyed the presentation. Thank you.